Hey everybody, welcome back. This is a quick video. Uh, it's an update on the issue I was having with my elevator rubbing the wingtip. But before we get started, you might notice something different about this video. That is, I am now mobile. Now I use the massive amounts of money that I'm making on YouTube to buy this new lens for the camera. The lens I was using was an 18 to 55 millimeter lens and that's what came with the camera and I bought a 10 to 18 millimeter lens, which lets me hold the camera without making me look super close to the lens. Another upgrade I have is I got a microphone on top of the camera now. It's a good quality Rode microphone and you should not be able to hear any kind of echo uh, in the hangar here. So with the microphone and the new lens, lets me be a little bit mobile and I don't always have to have the camera sitting on a tripod. For this next part of the video you're going to see, I filmed yesterday. My neighbor Brian came over with his infrared thermometer and just for our own curiosity, we wanted to see what the difference in temperature was between the white paint and the blue paint. So we first measured the temperature in the hangar where it's relatively cool. Then we moved the airplane outside, let it sit in the afternoon sun for a while and measured the temperature again. Now the problem with the next couple of clips is that I had the camera set up for that lavalier microphone that I was wearing and I didn't realize that when Brian's talking or when he's filming, it's not gonna pick up any audio. So for those parts, I just voiced over, which you'll see here in just a minute. But let's take a look at that and then we'll come back in the hangar here now and I'll show you how I fixed the wingtip. Now you guys might remember my terribly ugly assistant, Brian. <laughs> He's going to use his infrared thermometer and measure the temperature inside, just for a starting point, and then we'll go outside, let it sit in the sun for a bit, and we will see how much it actually heats up. Well, this is where I realized it wouldn't record Brian's voice because I was using that lavalier or microphone but he's measuring the top of the fuselage on the white, which came out to 73.5 degrees. And then when he was done, he moved it over to the blue, which you would expect to be the same. Uh, and it pretty much was, it was 73.9 degrees on the blue. So those are the measurements in the hangar. All right, so now we'll move it outside, let it sit out there for a bit, and we will see the difference between the white and the blue. Well, again, Brian, saying something as I was pulling the airplane out but the audio is completely unusable but one of the things just as I'm pulling the airplane out here when the nose wheel gets all the way down to where the ramp meets the taxiway there's actually a little bit of a bump there that I always have to be careful not to go over too fast right about there and then what I'm yakking about here is I was pointing to the Sun just saying that it's about noon so the Sun is high overhead and I'll let the airplane sit out for a little bit let it heat up before we measure the temperatures of the white and the blue. So right now it's only been outside for like a minute. We're just gonna see what it is. 93. 93 on the white. 106 on the blue. Now what I'm pointing out here is that the gap I have in the back, right at the tip, is about 3 16 when it's in the hangar. And out here in the sun, now that it's fully heated and expanded, it's about an eighth of an inch. So I've noticed that the right side only moves about 1 16th of an inch, giving me an eighth inch gap, which is a nice workable gap. On the left side here, I was explaining that the gap was not perfectly even. Up at the top there, it was about an eighth of an inch, and right here is about an eighth. And as you go back towards the tip, it was about three sixteenths of an inch. So it actually got wider as it went back. And even this tip, as it heats up in the sun, it moves about a sixteenth of an inch, giving me about a perfect one eighth inch gap the entire way. So both the left and right side on my airplane, the very tip, seems to, when it heats up and expands, it moves about a sixteenth of an inch inboard. Now that the airplane's been sitting outside for quite a while, we wanted to get another temperature reading. And on the blue, the temperature was 118 degrees. And then 
as Brian moved over and measured the white, the top of the fuselage was 90 degrees. So it's a 28 degree difference between the white and the blue paint. So now let's take a look at how I fixed the wingtip. Now in order to fix this, it would have been great if I could have just sanded down the lip of the plastic and that would have created a bigger gap. That wasn't possible because when I built the airplane, I made this rib exactly even with the edge of the wingtip. So obviously, even if I could sand the plastic down, the, the aluminum rib would still be in the same spot. And then if the wingtip heats up and moves inboard, that rib would still rub on the elevator. So that didn't work. And then if you remember on the previous video, I was kind of hoping that I could just drill out maybe like three or four rivets and then push the rib in, put in maybe bigger rivets because the hole would be a little bit off. And then I could just touch up a little bit of blue paint on the rivet head. <laughs> that would have been great, but that didn't work. And I kind of didn't think it would because even if you drill out like three or four rivets, you really can't bend this aluminum rib and push the back half of it in. I had to drill out all of the rivets all the way up to what I guess I kind of call the pivot point. And that's just where this aluminum rib rivets to the aft spar of the horizontal stabilizer. So when the plastic wingtip heats up and this part bends inward, I think it kind of pivots or moves all the way up here. So I had to drill out all of the rivets on the top and bottom all the way up to here. And then you can see in between the old holes, I added new rivets. And the old holes I filled with epoxy resin and uh, the resin was mixed with micro balloons and flocks to give it some thickness. So the next step obviously will be to sand this down in between all the rivets and then I can repaint the tip. But one of the things I did when I drilled out all the rivets, I took this rib and I pushed it outboard. Uh, that, that let me be able to get to the lip to, to sand it down. And I wound up taking about an eighth of an inch off of the plastic. But I pushed this rib back a little bit further than I had to. And the reason I did that, as you can see now, I still have a little bit of lip of plastic here. So if I had to, I could still sand off some more plastic without hitting the rib. However, I don't need to do that because as you saw in the previous clips, the way I have it now works great. Up here, there's about an eighth of an inch of a gap. And as you get towards the back, there's about a 3 16 inch gap. And when this tip heats up fully, it moves inboard a sixteenth of an inch. So when the wing tip is in the sun, heated up, and it expands, it basically what it does is it makes a perfect eighth inch gap the entire way. This really doesn't close in up here. It just starts bending back here to where, the, like I said, the tip moves in about a sixteenth of an inch, which makes an even eighth inch gap. So it's fixed. It's been out in the sun and fully heated up and it works great. I have plenty of clearance with the elevator. It no longer rubs. Now the next step obviously will be to make it look pretty. I have to sand down the, the resin here. And then what I'm going to do is I will mask off the aluminum here. You can see where the aluminum is. I'll mask it off all the way around, mask off, you know, the whole airplane but that leaves just the, the, the plastic tip here exposed. And I will scuff up the paint on the entire tip and then repaint the entire tip. And that way there's no paint lines or anything like that. The whole wing tip will be repainted. All this will be blue. And then even on the inside here where you can see it's white where I sand it down, that will all be blue also. Uh, and it should look pretty good. All right, guys, now to answer some of your questions that you left in the comment section on a previous video, a lot of you guys were saying I should just paint the wingtips white. And yeah, of course that may work because the white, as we saw, does not heat up as much as the blue and it might keep it cool enough so that the tip doesn't move. However, if I wanted my wingtips white, I would have painted them white in the first place. This paint scheme on this airplane is based on the Blue Angel C-130. And the Blue Angel C-130 does not have white tips and it does not have yellow tips. It has blue tips. And that's how I want to keep mine. And that is why I'm going through all this work to fix this and make it work so that I can keep it blue. Now, another suggestion, which is something I had previously thought about, which was actually going to be my first 
fix was to add an L angle inside here on the ribs and that would help stiffen the back and it may prevent it from moving. However, I have my doubts that that would work anyway because if you took an L angle in your hand and you moved it like this, like if you were gonna, if you took up a twig and you were gonna snap that twig or a pencil, you can take an L angle and bend it. And because the back end only moves a 16th of an inch, I just have a feeling that with that L angle in here and just such a little bit of movement, that it would probably just bend that L angle and I don't think it would really keep this from moving in. It may or it may not. But the main problem with adding an L angle in here is that I would have to remove the entire wing tip. And I really don't want to remove the wing tip because that involves drilling out all the rivets up here on the front half of the, the, the horizontal stabilizer also. Uh, and it's just a lot more work and it's a lot harder to paint with, without a, a paint line in there. So I really didn't want to remove the, the tip. So for me, like I just explained, the, the best fix for me was actually just to make the back end work, which is pretty simple really. It was just a matter of drilling out rivets, uh, sanding down the plastic to create a bigger gap and then re-riveting it. And then of course the issue now is just fixing the paint, sanding down the resin here where I filled the old holes and repainting the wing tip. Once that's done, you probably won't even know that it was ever fixed. It'll look great. Works good, lasts a long time. Mm -hmm.